Assalamualaikum, my name is Wan Zulfifah binti Wan Zulkifli. My metric number is A18A1027. Today, I want to present my part which is company background, vision, mission and objective of Padini and H&M. First of all, I want to present about Padini. Padini was affiliated in government's manufacturing and wholesaling. It was began operation as Huayo Government Manufacturers Company in 1971. It was entered the retail industry with flagship Padini brand in 1975. There are eight unique brands under Padini which are Mickey, Seed, Rope, Wincy, Wincy Accessories, PDI, P and Co, and Padini Authentics. Mickey has two brand under them, which are Mickey Kids and Mickey Maternity. Next, seats are focused on urban office wear. Wincy and Wincy Accessories are more focused on the flexible taste of women. However, the brand of Padini Authentics also focus on quality casual wear. Next, we go to vision of Padini. Padini state that their vision is to be the market in the retail industry. They achieve their goal through uh, hard work, self-discipline and creative. Their mission is to create credible products to meet out target customers' requirement but exceeds their expectation. Next, we go to objective. Objective uh, in Padini has uh, two components which are short-term objective and long-term objective. In short-term objective, they want to upgrade the image of its product while emphasizing the value and quality. Next, they want to fulfill the potential of the export market. In long-term objective, they want to maintain and increase its leadership position in Malaysia's fashion industry. Okay, next we go to H&M company. Founder of H&M is an early person. They open store the H&M first store is in 1947. He names the store is uh, Hands in Westeros. First of all, Hands only sold women's clothing because the word Hands mean she. After that, the company began selling men's and women's clothing. So, we go to vision of H&M which um, lead the change towards secular and renewable fashion while being a fair and equal company. Their mission is to make everyone look and feel good. The objective is make your target for sustainable cotton public to show you are serious and convince other brands to do the same. They also don't compromise for short-term wins but will a stable base for the long run. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurul Hassanah binti Muhammad Zuki. My metric number A18A1014. Okay, today I would like to present my part which is SWOT analysis of Padini and H&M. Okay, SWOT analysis of H&M which is a unique identifier for all brands, strong financial performance, dependence on third-party supplier, focus on expansion to improve their profit, Ecom as a platform involving fashion trend. Okay, for this type of sort analysis of H&M, they used all of this type to build up the profit and to build up their company and to make sure customer well known their company as well as can. Then SWOT analysis of Padini, which is they want to be a product capable of leading the closing relate market in Malaysia, which is they need to make sure customer in Malaysia know about their company, about their brand has been uh, has been produced. Then unstable profit. Padini has a problem with 
un unstable uh, profit which is they did not have a um, they did not get a, a maximum profit and this is the problem they should know and they need to gain lots of profit to make sure they can uh, remain in the market and the last one is to open more subsidiaries they had opportunity to open more subsidiaries which is uh, they just can collaborate with the Indian market or uh, anything so that they can gain more profit about that okay next I would like to present about analysis ratio horizontal and vertical okay as we can see of the current ratios of uh, Padini holding in two years, 2017 until 2019. We can see that 2019, uh, the highest of current ratio, which is 3.92 times uh, than 2018 and 2017. This highest ratio reflects that 2019 has the ability to pay in a short term obligations on time. For a quick ratios, in 2019, uh, the highest of the quick ratio, which is 2.48 times, then 2018, 1.94 times, and 2017, 1.71 times. This highest ratio, uh, years 2019, that has the ability to pay these short term obligations without really on inventories. For the net working capital, we can see in 2019, uh, the highest of the net capital, which is RM602.95, then 2018 and 2017. These are higher ratios, absolute measure in the liquidity. At 2017, at the highest of inventory turnover, which is 4.93 times than 2019 and 2018. Yes, 2017, uh, uh, the effectiveness of inventory for generate the sales. Return of investment for Padini Holding. Return of investment of Padini Holding at the 2017 is the highest with rate 67% of invest rate of investment than 2018 and 2019 which is 36% and 34%. The highest of the rate of investment, the highest return we will get. For the fixed asset turnover, we can see that 2019 is the highest, which is 12.18 times than 2017 and 2018. The, high, the highest ratio of years 2019 has effectiveness of fixed asset to generate sales. For total asset turnover, we can see that 2019 is the highest, which is 1.86 times than 2019 and 2018. Okay, for a debt ratios for Padini Holding, we can see that 2017 is the highest debt ratio, which is 73%. Then 2018, only 58%. And 2019, only 44%. This highest ratio reflects that 2017 has the highest amount of debt to finance assets. We move to the debt or debt to equity, which is 2018 is the highest, is 81% than 2017 and 2019. This is the highest ratio reflect that 2018 has the highest amount of debt, such as in the capital structure. For gross profit margins, we can see that 2018 was the highest, which is 41%, then 2017 and 2019. The highest of ratio in 2018 indicates the highest contribution margins. Operation profit margins, we can see that 2017 and 2018 was the highest of operation profit margin. We can see that did amount the of 40 percent. 
for operation profit margin we can see 2017 and 2018 have a same percent which is 40 percent and for operations profit margin we can see 2017 and 2018 was the highest of operations profit margins the highest the ratio indicated the highest of contributions profit margins for net profit margins we can see 2018 is the highest which is 11 percent than 2017 and 2019 the highest of ratio indicate the better income to shareholder for return on asset we can see that 2018 is the highest highest return of asset which is 90 percent this ratio, uh, highest ratio of 2018 indicate of the highest for return on the equity 2017 is the highest uh, which is 28 percent this ratio indicated the highest return of shareholder okay next we move to the h and m group in a three years analysis ratio in a current ratio we can see the 2018 is the highest current ratio which is 1.39 times this highest ratio reflects that 2018 has the ability to pay in the short term obligations on time for the quick ratio 2017 and 2018 at the same unit which is 0 0.54 times and this is the high ratios in 2017 and 2018 has ability to pay a short term obligations without really on inventories for networking capital we can see that 2018 are the highest of the networking capital which is rm 70357 For inventory turnover, 2019 is the highest, which is 2.92 times than 2017 and 2018s. This is effectiveness of inventory to generate the sale. For return on investment, the 2019 is the highest rate, which is 39 percent than 2017 and 2018. To fix asset turnover, we can see that 2019 is the highest of fixed asset turnover, which is 3.99 times than 2017 and 2018. Total asset turnover 2019 is the highest, which is 1.93. This highest ratio reflects that 2019 has effectiveness to total asset and generate sell. For our debt ratio, 2019 was the highest, which is 52% than 2018 and 2017. This is highest amount of debt to finance assets. Debt to equity, we can see that 2019 is the highest debt, which is 1.11 percent that 2018 for gross profit margin 2017 is the highest profit mar profit margin which is 54 percent next we move to operating profit margins we can see that 2017 is the highest operating profit margin which is 10 percent than 2018 and 2019 this is higher ratio indicated better productivity such as in operations for net profit margins 2017 is the highest net profit mar margins which is 8% then 2018 and 2019 only 5% and 6% this higher ratio of 2017 indicated better income to shareholder 
For return on investments, we can see 2017 is the highest on return on assets, which is 50% then 2018 and 2019. And return of equities 2017 also is the highest of return on equity which is 27 percent than 2018 and 2019 this highest ratio of 2017 indicated to return shareholder assalamualaikum and hi my name is muhammad hamza bin abu jalil and my metric number is a18 B0330 I want to review on section 4 subsection 4.3 and subsection 4.4 subsection 4.3 and subsection 4.4 we talk about analysis horizontal for the company that we choose which is Padini Holding Mahat and H&M we will look onto the table 3 uh, firstly for Padini Holding Mahat we can see uh, on the right side in terms of percentage there is an increase and decrease in terms of percentage and we come up with a conclusion for the comparison between 2018 and 2017 and we come up with that all the increase in ratio happened because Padini Holding Bright make a new plan for the customer in market and it got the attract it attract the attention from their shareholder to the 2018 2019 and it has slight changes in terms of uh, uh, net asset because in 2018 2019 comparison the net asset for Padini Holding Berhad has decreased because due to the change in government and economic stability make it harder for Padini Holding Berhad to maintain their previous success but through all that, their total liquidity still increased compared to 2018. Next, we will move on to table 4. Is, uh, table 4 is under subsection 4.4 and is, we will talk and we will review on the H&M. Yeah. Okay. We come we come up with a conclusion for comparison of 2018 and 2017 for H&M and there's uh, I would say a mix between increase and decrease in terms of total equity and net asset because during that period of 2018 and 2017 comparison for H&M Total equity has decreased by 1.9% 1. 1. because H&M make a new plan in the market and it make a lot of expenses because of the because the increase in liability, which result in the decrease of total equity. And the comparison between 2018 and 2019, we make uh, we come up with a conclusion that due to the economic instability and the changing in government H&M find it hard to increase their profit because the total equity is de uh, decreased and comp uh, much more compared to the to 2018 but for net asset it increased around 1.43 percent compared to 2018 Well, from my conclusion, uh, both company uh, has problem in 2019, uh, comparison in 2019 and 2018 because due to the government change and economic instability. But if we look onto the financial uh, report of both company, we can see that Padini Holding Berhad has lightest, I would say, a better financial, a better financial report than H&M. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Wan Syarul Nizam bin Roslan. My matric number is A18 A0950. Today, I would like to present about 
vertical analysis for Padini and HM for 3 years. The main objective using this method is professional analysis of financial statement where each, line, where each line item on a financial statement is listed as the percentage. I will take randomly for each item for balance sheet for each company. First, I will present for Padini. For the item current asset is increased for each year for 2017, the total uh, current asset for Padini is 725.09 and 2018 is 765.41 and 2019 is 809. The item current asset I take is account receipt for 2017. For 2017, the account receipt is 54.36 and the percentage is 2.6%. For 2018, the total receipt has decreased for 56.5 and the percentage is 5%. For 2019, the account receipt has increased for 52.5. 067 and the percentage is 5.45 percent next i will go to the total asset for padini in, in 2070 is 881.26 and increase for 2080 to 924 and increase 955 to the for the item total asset, I take for the property plan for 2070 is 360.68 or the percentage is 38% and has increased for 2080 to 351.44 and the percentage is 38.03% and increase for 2090 is 363.73% and the percentage is 38% for 2090 lastly for the total current liability for 2070 for Padini is 310 and decrease for 2080 to 261 and it decrease again for 2090 is 206 for the item current liability i take for the account payable for 2080 is 836 and the percentage is 50 percent and decrease for the 2080 is 134 and the percentage is 50 percent and 2090 it has been decreased decrease for 102 and the percentage is 11 percent next i will go to sm company for the total current asset for 2070 is 55,746 and increase for 2080 to 60,576 and increase again for 2080 is 62,272 for the item total current asset I take a receipt for 2070 is 5,267 5, and the percentage is 5% and increase for 2080 the amount of a receipt is 6,000 329 and the percentage is 5.32 and decrease for 2090 is 5870 and the percentage and the percentage is 5.87 percent for the total asset for 2070 is 1000 600 562 increase for each year for the 
is 1118790 and 2090 is 120485 for the item property flame for 20 for uh, 2070 is 368 and the percentage is 37 percent for 2018 is 423 and the percentage is 39% and increase for 2090 is 40,892 and the percentage is uh, 33.93% the calculation that I have made using this method is easier to understand the correlation between single item on button line that's all for me. Okay, then about the recommendation. Uh, for our group, we recommend to H&M and Padini company should exploit in order to generate more profit and they need to use the strategy of growth and investment to make sure they can and still remain in the market then the strategy of growth blue ocean they uh, just they can use the strategies to make to make sure they can remain in the market and make sure customer would like to still choose their brand uh, in their daily life then uh, they also can join venture with the indian market um as we know indian market has not familiar with the brand so why not they choose this strategy they just join venture with the indian market to make sure uh, these people can use can also use their brand and then set up a blog <coughs> for my for our opinion why not uh, this company set a blog and uh, the customer can just uh, buy through the blog or just order and uh, we can say that just uh, online, online buying, something like that. Then uh, do a fashion show. Uh, nowadays, everyone has uh, published their product, has produced a product, a good product, which is they can uh, do a fashion show. Uh, from that fashion show, they can invite a very famous, uh, and from that fashion show, everyone can know about their brand, uh, actually. Okay. Okay, the last one is conclusion. Uh, we can conclude that financial management is not only about the theory learning. Financial uh, management is very important to someone build up the company to make sure they can still remain in the market. The stronger financial management is the greater the opportunity you have to maximize your profit. So, successful entrepreneur is based on how they manage their financial management and how they can be up and how they can uh, prove to the others about their financial management. Thank you.